Welcome to the No Culture Fitness of Moms Who Lift podcast, where we bring you real people, real stories, with an action plan to match your goals. Welcome, Moms Who Lift podcast. Coming back at you. <laughs> so today's topic, we're going to talk about how much is too much of training and uh, what's involved in the process of recovery and the importance of actually having a recovery day or maybe even days in your training cycle. So um, I think we can start off with you, Elle. Um, depending on the type of training that you do, you want to schedule your recovery just like you schedule your training. So when you have a program that you're working with, you have a recovery program programmed with your exercises. Inability to take recovery will definitely um, hinder the, the progress of the program. If um, you feel like you're unable to take recovery or you don't need recovery, maybe you can train harder and find a way to actually need it. Or uh, maybe it's just you are not training for the right purpose. Um, a lot of us use the gym or uh, whatever we do, our hobbies, as um, avoidance of dealing with the real life situation. So if that's what you're using uh, your gym for, that's also the reason why you may well not want to take recovery. Uh, but it's very important because it's, I mean, although it will help you mentally not to skip a day and just, you know, go and do what you do and feel better because your adrenaline is high and, you know, you got some endorphins going. But uh, 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 in the long run, you're definitely not, not going to see as much results from your training as you would if you follow the program with recovery. So, but it's, it's very, very common. It's nothing uncommon about it. Absolutely. So I think I like to always kind of di dissect things in its, in its like almost components. So like the first thing is obviously what is recovery, right? Some people don't think of recovery as only just taking a day off. But in essence, your recovery has several components. Not only is it about you taking an actual day off from training, right, and letting your body rest, um, sleep, which you do basically on a daily basis, that's considered mm -hmm. recovery too. So from day to day, you have to be able to recover properly to be able to train hard enough for the next day. So if you're getting, recommendation is usually about eight hours sleep. If you're getting less than eight hours, most likely you're not going to be recovering as well. Now, there's been studies obviously shown also for weight loss and weight gain that the individuals who actually sleep less um, have actually more chances and higher probabilities of gaining more weight right. due to the fact that it's, you know, due to the fact of, of stress and hormones. So that's like the first thing. Second thing is obviously your nutrition. So if you are trying to lose weight and you are under eating, right, because that's what you have to do is you have to eat less in order to lose weight you're not going to be recovering as much as someone who is eating in maintenance or could be eating above more than they need to in order to actually gain weight now when we talk about weight gain people are probably some women are like omg weight gain no there are weight gain that happens not in you getting fat it's a weight gain of you actually gaining muscle so depending on what your again goals are right you're going to follow different protocols so that's your nutrition we've got sleep and we also got obviously stress management. I mean, that's I think the biggest aspect because the the more stressed of a job, let's say you have, or stress at home, um, that stress ultimately will also hinder your day-to-day -day recovery. So combining all of these elements together, that is considered your recovery. Um, when we, you know, when we talk about, obviously, you know, as I think as true, true athletes, we, we love to train. We, this is something that we just do. We where it's, it's so ingrained in us. It's, you know, it's something that we love. We want to come into the gym and we can put in hours and hours of work or, you know, whatever it is that we're trying to do. However, we ultimately fundamentally forget that if we don't let our body recover, there's going to be no adaptation process. Mm -hmm. And in order for you to actually get stronger, faster, gain that muscle whatever the concept that you are going for whatever your goal is if you don't recover you cannot adapt and ultimately you're going to be either standing still where you are and wondering why i cannot move forward or sometimes you can actually start regressing um as as, as funny as it sounds you're like how is it possible 
I work out every day, seven days a week. I, you know, I, I sleep enough, but guess what? Your body, your muscles, they get slight little tears every time you work out in essence, right? And those tears have to have the ability to recover. And if you don't allow those muscles to recover, which is again, taking a day off or eating enough, especially if you're constantly under eating and training, 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 you will actually start to regress. You will go backwards. Um, it's not that me, that's not something that we're just saying. It is actual literature that has been published. Um, it is something that is a scientific fact. Um, and any, any high level athlete that you actually look at, they train hard, they take a day off, recover, they eat, they sleep enough, they are not in calorie deficits, they go back to training hard again, and it's, it's a repeat cycle. That's, that's basically the, the concept of things. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you as a mental, mentally it's very difficult. <laughs> Because we're using, uh, because yeah. you know, this is something that we do for ourselves, and we, especially if you enjoy training or you enjoy some part of it. Yes, some people have motivate, problem motivating actually going to the gym. Mm -hmm. but it's a different story. <laughs> then they recover. They they recover the faster. Yeah. So like, if you're just like an average gym goer, right, and you're like, how much is too much? Guess what? You going into the gym and doing let's say a 45 minute training session and you are sedentary you sit majority of the day and that's your job your job is a desk job and you literally don't get out even to walk around outside on a day-to-day -day basis you going and training even you know five days a week or six days a week is not going to be a detriment to you because of the lifestyle that you live and it also depends on what kind of training you're doing most likely your training is not very very hard enough to cause that big of a uh, you can say uh, rupture in a sense right. of your, of, of um, I guess with it within your own body, it doesn't it doesn't produce enough it's of a not stimulus. That intense, yeah, absolutely. it's not that intense. Exactly. Yes, you gave me the right word. Intensity. Right. It's not that intense. Yes. Um, um, and uh, you know, and, and I think like just like you mentioned something, training hard. Sometimes yes. training hard doesn't mean more. Sometimes yes. training hard means less. Sometimes yes. training hard means sticking to what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Training hard doesn't mean actually training more, but rather training the lifts or the drills or depending on what you're training that you need to do as opposed to just doing them, not doing them intense enough. So you got to stick to the program or to stick to the exercise. You got to have a program. You cannot just come in and do whatever. And you know, and just enjoy the gym. It's again, it's okay. I think when you're like a novice and you just come in and okay, well, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I've been in the gym, I sweat. But when you're trying to achieve results and you want to see measurable results, you need to see, you need to have a accountability and measurable program. Absolutely. Because if you don't, if you don't know what you did last week. And then you're doing it this week. How do you know? How are you going to progress? How are you going to progress? Yeah. So you got to have something like that. And your recovery should be part of it. Yeah. It definitely, it definitely will teach you how to be, how to work hard. How to work hard, yeah. It's something, and it's funny because I think we can, both of us can probably bring it, bring it from our own personal experience. For me, as much as I love to train and I obviously... Underst I, I do understand the concept of, of taking a days off, but even for me, it was very difficult to actually, you know, back off and take that day off. But when I actually did and I, you know, understood that, hey, me taking a day off is not in a sense that I'm going to be uh, reversing backwards, right? I, I thought I was going to start to lose strength or I'm not going to progress as fast as I did. It actually came out to be the opposite. The day that I took off, my following day when I come in, I can train at one of my most hardest intensities. And people don't understand what intensity is. Your intensity is not you just coming in there, talking to your friends as you're, let's say, lifting weights or even doing some sort of form of cardio. It is you literally focusing on what you're doing. You're it's your an all-out effort. Yes, it's an all-out effort. You don't have time to be standing, talking to your friend next next to you as you're training. Like that's that's the reality of intensity. And so when you take that day off, you actually will notice how refreshing and how much more energy you have. Yes. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can I can do so much more today. And that's truly that's what it is. That's the concept. Is you are letting your body rest so you can actually 
go and hit it harder and and create that adaptation that you're achieving for. Okay. Yeah. So I, I guess the um, the extension of this conversation is how do we know that what's what's too much? What would be too much? Ah, what are the symptoms or what are the signs of oh. it's too much? Well, it's, oh yes, it's very hard. <laughs> The, uh, well, this is where it's super hard to determine. It, it depends on the level of um, fitness that you're at. Um, I think for someone who is super fit, is um, when you start feeling fatigued all the time, when you lose interest in even doing anything, yes. when you just have your you your day, your things that you used to be excited right about, about, of actually like coming in to and doing either your favorite training, yeah, like it doesn't matter, yeah, whatever you exercises just, you were you doing, do, you don't you even want to like, show up. You're the like lo oh. the loss, the, the loss <laughs> of excitement or interest. Yeah. That's a huge sign. Uh, you uh, the um, certainly the injuries or feeling uh, sore all the time, like in just everywhere, like everything hurts all the time. That's a second huge sign. So when I say I feel like I've been run over by a truck, but, not a good idea. <laughs> well, well, I've been, uh, like, and it's not right after training. We're talking about no. days after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's accumulation. So f fatigue, that's fatigue. That's fatigue. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. It's fatigue, because that accumulation. At first you may feel good and you're like going strong. It could be for days and weeks and it could be even months. It depends on so the person, see, right? And then, and you, then it catches up to you. And then you, yes. uh, so, so, so that, um, what else could be? Um, uh, maybe, um, maybe you know, maybe you your insomnia. Maybe you can fall asleep, mm, and all the signs. One, yes. and, and when you feel, how like about food? Either eating too much, much or too, too little. little. You start, because you start to almost you can't almost regulate your your, your food intake. So when you also. when you notice that you're not yourself, it may be that you are in the gym too much. People, well, when like things that you enjoy start irritating you. So that's for someone. Hey, that, and, and and notice if you only work out three or four days a week, that does I not mean. <laughs> Please do not take this as shit. I don't want to go. No, no. <laughs> I'm training too much. <laughs> that's you know the same thing like a training too little. So when you st but if you don't see results, <laughs> it's either you're training too much or too little. You're just not training. Or the you're right training way. not the correct way. Not the correct way. You ne you need to re uh, rethink your re programming and pro receive re rethink yes. and relook at what you're doing because it's yes. uh, there should always be some sort of a measurable progress right. and it doesn't necessarily mean weight on the scale progress. Weight on the scale is not always a measurable progress. Well, I, I always, this is what I think you, we need to, we, we use the, um, we use the benchmarks for the progress depending on our goal. So if your goal is weight loss and you want to see a number on a scale move, you got to get on that freaking scale and just keep looking. Every week you got to weigh yourself because if you are not and that's what you want, it ain't going to happen. So unless you have that goal, if your goal is to get stronger you have to record that stuff and you have to record your lifts and see that you're progressing you know as you as you get as the weights feel lighter you see that you're progressing if your goal so you have to record the weights if your goal is to run more to run longer distance you have to record how much you run and you have to slowly progress so you have That's to right. so you gotta you only can achieve what you focus on so if you're what you actually not only focus what on tracking, but you're actually tracking yes you, because if your yes. way if your goal is to lose weight and you're like okay i'm gonna run and i'm gonna lose weight because i'm a runner because all Runners lose weight. It's not going to happen because if only you're going to focus on running and not on your scale, you'll be surprised. It's not. It's not going to move. It's and actually, I, well, we did an episode about running, which, um, you know, in reality, you know, running is great and that's something that you enjoy. But again, you know, uh, runners typically do require a good amount of food intake in yeah. order, especially if you're a long distance runner. Right. You yeah. can't. You cannot be at a caloric deficit running. Marathons. You'll, I mean, you, you, you will injured. not be. Yeah, it's a, you're going to be injury prone. But this, this is the same thing with almost any goal that you have, minus obviously <laughs> just weight loss. Any goal that you have where you are trying to achieve something outside of the scale weight going down will require for you to have good a, a sound nutrition. Right. Meaning sometimes your scale is not going to go down. Sometimes your scale is actually going to go up. But it's all again because of your performance. You're now a performance athlete. You're not a Cosmetic athlete. Well, it, <laughs> that's again, right. If that's what oh, yeah. it does, so you gotta find a goal. A lot of times the goal are not interchangeable, meaning this will happen and this will happen as a, you know, as a, 
as a sidekick of you know what I'm doing what I'm doing so I'm gonna start going to the gym and as a as a, as a side benefit I will lose weight no that's not gonna happen it doesn't work like this in some ways sometimes it does like are you eating healthier and maybe your blood pressure goes mm -hmm. down absolutely but but that's somehow, a great benchmark it, too it's like, a great yeah but you need to find a benchmark and this is what you need to measure once you're done measuring that maybe you can find a different goal cannot focus on everything at the same time no just be for disaster right <laughs> right right so it's it's very interesting and it's and that's when it becomes when you start um when you adapt into your new lifestyle of uh, being um of, of being active of being fit of being of eating right then it becomes okay well i am there what's my next goal well next goal let's see how much you train how much can you handle what's your goal so otherwise mm -hmm. you become that's another reason to become like okay i'm not interested anymore because i'm doing all that but i'm losing interest it's setting goals and achieving them that's what keeps us absolutely excited about our um yeah. excited about our and being able to uh, move i think forward um, right. because without goals something. because without goals it's you're just moving through just emotions and almost like yeah. this um, routine and to some degree routine is good but then to another degree it is not right because once you get um, anything that you start doing eventually you kind of almost get comfortable in it and change is not going to happen in your comfort zone so as soon as you get comfortable in one thing guess what it's time to change something else right. unless you're comfortable being there and that's where you want to be which is perfectly well, fine but you will but know and it's almost i want to say like people say when do i need when do i need to do this you will know when you when you're doing something like, oh, i'm just so tired of this of doing the same thing yes it doesn't mean you have to quit the same thing it means it needs to be just it needs a makeover you need to either change something within the thing or change the exercises that you do or maybe try something different or just a small change in what you're doing will create a huge change in the benefit of doing it and it will create a huge change in the way you're looking forward to it you should be looking forward towards your towards your hobby or you know whatever you want to call you know the fitness that we're talking about yeah. if it's your hobby or something event or a goal it should not be a daunting issue it should be something that you're excited about and you know what you just brought up a good um, point because it just got me thinking you know we we always want more right it's like once you achieve something you want something better and better and better but guess what you being able to actually maintain what you have is actually one of the biggest goals that you can ever achieve outside of you trying to get more thinner or whatever more muscle more this and more that Tr try actually just keeping up with what you it's have really it is a very, very difficult, difficult and and having that as one of your goals it's it's, great. it's a great goal too the, sometimes the, we need to go through these sometimes you go you know especially i think with weight loss weight loss you you obviously first are, are you're under eating in a sense right you're under eating you're exercising you lose the weight but guess what if you, you there is no linear right slope you're not going to just keep going down and continue to lose weight once you lose a certain amount of weight you have to always plateau and level off mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to gain a little extra weight just a little bit and then if you're ready you go again for another weight loss phase depending on how much weight you actually have to lose however that 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 maintenance part that big piece of it it's almost as long if not longer than your ability to lose the weight and that is going to be the biggest and yes. it's like one of the biggest goals and one of the most challenging i think goals for and, anyone to and uh, to quite have. frankly one of the most rare goals that i um that i found in my experience of working with people because uh, uh, quite frankly i can count on maybe <laughs> on one of one hand that the people that actually got there mm -hmm. and are sticking to it and mm -hmm. just focusing on maintaining by changing things around by seeing what's new but and actually happy with the way they are I can find I can it, one mm -hmm. hand is too many fingers to count. Yes, most of the people are just not happy you know what I think it is they don't look at they only look for a immediate result without understanding or looking long term it's not about oh I'm gonna go on a diet lose weight and that's it there you have to think be, beyond <laughs> that's Man. it like what are you gonna do afterwards so but that's a different topic Man. too that's like a totally different realm of of um, 
of things that we can get a into. A lot of people just quit. A lot of people quit when it gets hard. A yes. lot of people do not get you the goal. A lot of people do. Yes. I mean, it's because life is hard. I mean, we have things happening. We have changes of jobs. We have changes in personal status. We have kids that you, you will we get. We now have in. COVID. We have now COVID. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of times, so it's, it's just, it's really like always that kind of a, you know, balancing game of doing things. But what I wanted to say as far as training, I mean, this is one thing that you can learn from physique athletes. I mean, the true pros. True, true pros. True We're not pros. talking about the ones that you see one time with a bikini shot and then you never see them again because that's that's they, ultimately the same concept of they, wanting to lose weight achieving and it and then that's it and and then you're you're back to where you started somehow again. they're able to train be at that peak shape and then and then reverse diet back and then be okay with that and then train again be okay with, with them gaining weight, weight. let's be understand for people to understand because some people wait I, I, i'm particularly talking to a lot of the women a lot of women okay. don't are are very uh, like oh my gosh how can you gain the weight back because it's again you you as a physique athlete for you it is not about a goal weight how much your scale says for you it's ultimately how you look for literally one hour on a stage. So in order for you to look the way the models look, right, on the stage, that is what they do. They gain weight. In order to for you to build the muscle, for them to look the way they do to gain muscle, you have to right. eat in a surplus, which means you gain a little fat. You gain a little weight, but guess what? It allows you to train harder. It try allows you to actually gain muscle, and then, guess what, you prepare. You basically starve yourself again. You diet well, down. I mean, it's, uh, you I have this like, beautiful physique. This is you're an athlete. You, this is what you train right, for. They, that's they, it. Right? They 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 able to shed the water and show that beautiful muscle that they built with training, and then they are going back into maintenance stage and they building more yes. muscle because it's, especially females, it's hard to build muscle. They build more muscle, and then yes. you know next show. I'm not sure, but this is something to learn from them um, as a the people that don't compete or mm -hmm. they're not in the physics sport is you find the focus like let's say lose weight or get stronger you get that you gotta maintain it yes. you got you can't just keep getting stronger 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 because then you're gonna get injured and you're gonna get weak for a long time that's so right you get you're gonna reverse stronger. backwards <laughs> you what you're gonna do with all the strengths when is it enough it's well, never this, enough, I'm going to tell you, Al. This is why... It's just never, you just want to keep getting stronger. Well, but this is why <laughs> you have your... This is why if you're a person that needs a goal, you need some something to culminate that event. Yes. Either a competition or something. Because you cannot. No, cannot you cannot. Keep it, you can, at some point, you got to deload, or you got to reverse do. diet, or you got to... Yeah taper the you know running and sometimes you have to stuff. look at just the movements and enjoy sometimes so, just the gym and, so and do you, right. things outside of what you normally right. do so when you so when you are so if you're a competing athlete you always have that you always have that event that allows you to cultivate towards the event right before the event you back off you're there the peak shape either you do load before you meet or you you know reduce the training before your competition physique competition let's, whatever let's let's define you, de load because some people may not you, understand what you, a de load is you you lift you you train less your your you, intensity basically and your volume goes down so you're allowing it's, it's, it's a form of recovery well, it's, in a a, it's same for every sport so for for yep. strength athletes you just back off the intensity for um endurance athletes Let's you back off the intensity by reducing mileage or times to train. You got to be fresh. That's where we talk about recovery. So this is That's your right. biggest recovery. That's then right. you go for your physique athletes. You train very little. You basically because you can't train because you have to starve to show <laughs> the muscle. So it's just it, it, it it's just a form of recovery for anyone. For the student athlete, and then they go and they have their show. Well, the problem becomes that not many of us are competing athletes. So. So let's say you're like so excited and you keep going, train, 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 train. So hopefully you have someone in your life that's your mentor or coach or someone that's going to tell you, okay, it's time to take a step back. You're in great shape. So now I take a picture of yourself or, <laughs> you know, take a video of lifting so much. Look, you know, how long you've been, how many weeks you've been training. You've been training for freaking 12 weeks and you keep adding the weight. Okay, it's time to deload. So the part, so that's, I guess, kind of like, bringing this whole discussion to an end. Recovery is important. You take recovery day as you're training, you take mm -hmm. a huge recovery before your event, mm -hmm. or if you don't have an event, you just 
come up with a date that it's a cutoff that after the date you got to reduce the intensity down take it easy a little bit and then build back up whatever your sport is that's right I think There's it's almost, very good. We can something we can get into. It's called your training cycles. So right. with it's any busy. any sport, you go through training cycles. Meaning you don't always just let's say, oh, um, you're not always working for muscle gain, which is your hypertrophy phase. You're not always just putting on more and more weight to get stronger, right? You go through phases that are structured specifically mm -hmm. towards what your goal is where you're going to go from your hypertrophy which is your you know um, muscle gaining phases to strength phases to either power phases or speed phases whatever your right. goal is and you actually go in these blocks right. back and forth in order for you to be able to improve and get better there's no such thing again as a linear doing the same exact thing over and over thinking that you're just gonna progressively get better over time you can hope and pray it will never happen <laughs> well that's talking about the structure and programming it's very hard for people to know what to do and yes. that's why they you know they don't do it you know it's funny that you just talked to me about structure programming because you brought up to me a conversation we had why someone asked you why do you write down what it is that you need to do for yourself yes. don't you already know as a trainer what to do no you know that 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 is um is a is a very amateur i think question to ask because again i if, cannot if, walk in and if i walk in in the gym and i have and, and i bounce around that's exactly what i do i bounce around i just pick up the weights i cannot finish a set because it's not written down well besides the fact that you you just pick up the set what are you gonna how are you gonna pro, how are you gonna track your progress to understand right. what you're gonna do better next time like you can't just show no. up and expect magically that you're all of a sudden you're gonna lift a few dumbbells you know some chest presses some some bicep curls and you know I, come in the next day and do something totally different and not even understand the concept of overload well and it's it's also me for me like, when i go in i can't i don't want my mind in overdrive i want to know exactly what i'm doing and yes i've been doing this for years and some say don't you know what you do probably not <laughs> <laughs> not unless it's written down <laughs> because i do it's there is a comfort but maybe this is talking about the mind training your mind maybe because i've been always when I train a client I always write down what they because do because you're disciplined you understand the concepts of I, I, I but so for me it's the same thing if I don't have it written down or better yet if you don't write it down <laughs> <laughs> because somehow everything that you write is better than everything oh, I write. Stuff. so I definitely don't get as hard over as focused of a session and we're talking about like hustling in the gym and like coming in and training yes when I say to myself okay well I'm just gonna do just the chest today I, so I don't need a program. Yes, I do. Because if it's not there, it's just not going to go. It's just not going to be as intense and as effective. And we'll, you know, need, time is precious. So, Absolutely. I agree. But I think with, you know, recovery, and just, just to give um, a few, I don't know, you know, if, it, it, I don't know if we have, obviously, male listeners or only female, but there has been, obviously, research done in terms of how much volume um, a female versus a male can actually do so females <laughs> we can handle a lot more volume than the male can I so can in terms that. of recovery um, you know you can't a, a female would would be able let's say to train we four or five endurance. days yes, yes you have muscle endurance a female could let's say train four or five days in a row right with with uh, let's say going for two hours I'm just saying I'm just giving you an example let's say she's two hours in the gym training four days in a row a man could probably only handle half of that volume. They're physically not able to recover as fast as we can. That's so this match. is just one one thing. However, don't take that as a mis as as an indicator that great I can just train all day long because I love it. No, you as a female, the fact that you can actually do more volume, you need to recover <laughs> because you're gonna overdo it and you will cause yourself injury. And yes. obviously, just it's um. Talk about stress. You know, you, you know, we we never we talked about stress in our lives, but guess what? Training is a stress to your body, and it's in some ways it's a good stress. But when we overdo it, it becomes um, not a too very much of a too good much thing. too much of a good thing. And it's and sometimes you don't even notice. You become even more irritable. Like it I've I've gone through these moments way. where every you know I'm training. I love it. I love it. All of a sudden. All of that fatigue sets in, yeah. and that fatigue mentally stresses, not, I mean, it like stresses mentally me out. And I am so much right. more irritable. Right. I can't do these things. Like everything is just, 
I'm on I'm edge in a sense. I yeah. think I mentioned this like as a son, like when do you know when I was talking about who is the person who's a seasoned athlete like yourself. You know that you are you know, when you are when you're irritable, when you mm -hmm. are very anxious about things, when you're on edge, you when you're constantly in pain, not just after the trigger, but you're no, like you every are, day you're just, unable yes. to recover, just unable to shake off the fatigue. Just all of this. Yes, this was yes. part of it and I think that's very important to know. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. But if you ever did, you probably can um, relate. I certainly can. And it's very, it's very hard to um, pinpoint on yourself. Mm -hmm. That's why, again, you know, we're talking about like having someone with you or someone that trains with you or someone that understands that can guide you in the right direction. I think that we um, hit a lot of good... Um, have hit a lot of good uh, points on mm -hmm. this. And if you like like what you're hearing it's probably good to listen to it a couple of times and maybe write some things down absolutely because as we talk certain things if it strike you you're like oh my gosh that's really hit a uh, chord with me write it down because you will forget I know you, me yes yes I will forget so I gotta write things down just like you write your program mm -hmm. and uh, and use it use it and certainly hit us with some question comments whatever you have about uh, anything that we talked about or any topics that you would like us to discuss or maybe repeat. Absolutely. And remember, this is actually free content. So the best thing you guys can do is subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube and or <laughs> uh, leave us a review on iTunes and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.